Hi, so I'm gonna tell you about VHS Pro Shader for Unity 3D. The shader basically emulates different processes and things which are happening in the analog video world. It emulates cathode ray tube screen bleeding, phosphor tail, VHS data corruption, analog video signal noise, interlacing and so on. I'm gonna th go through all these things uh, really soon. So first of all, to start, I wanna remove everything and start from the beginning. Okay, this is how it looks without effect. So I have to add effect, just VHS Pro. This is what we have. Um, okay, I'm just gonna turn off all the small things and that would be easier to understand how it works. The first most important thing which gives this retro effect is bleeding. What is bleeding? Bleeding is a cathode ray tail or trail on a phosphor screen. When the ray or electronic beam passing certain point of the phosphor screen, this point keeps glowing for some amount of time after the ray is already gone. The ray has a fading tail behind itself. This is the most important thing uh, which I emulated. And the parameter for it called bleed mode. There are several presets here, like you can see. The fourth mode here is a custom curve, where you can design your own bleeding curve. For easier understanding uh, how to build custom curve, you have to go to tools and debug bleeding curve. Then you can see like this graphic. And when you're adjusting the curve, you're seeing how it looks like. And also you can see the presets how they look like so you can try to emulate them or use them as a reference. So the first parameter here is edit mode. You have to turn it on while you're building the curve and don't forget to turn it off for the final build otherwise the curve will be caching every frame and it could reduce the performance. Let me explain curves a little bit. Um, so these are YIQ curves. Uh, YIQ is the color space used in Inti's C color TV system. The analog video signal is transmitted not in RGB but in YIQ. So here like you can tweak YIQ curves instead of RGB curves and it allows you to build your own custom bleeding curve. There are three curves, one for each channel. You can use a parameter IQ sync if you want to uh, have same curve for I and Q channels. So you can play around with the curves, add and remove keys, drag them back and forth, but the curve must stay between zero and one seconds in the end. Bleak length is a parameter which changes the length of the curve, but you have to be careful. Big values could cause slow performance on slow machines. Try to use as small values as possible. The default value is 21. You can always stretch uh, bleed curve by bleed stretch slider. So the next thing I want to talk about is other function in cathode ray tube emulation section. First thing here is vertical resolution or vertical quantization. The whole picture will be quantized vertically by lines. You can choose the amount of lines uh, from full screen without any quantization, 240 lines, 480 lines or custom where you can set the amount of lines in lines per height field. The next thing is fish eye. Uh, fish eye emulates a sort of real screen by bending the corners of image. It, it looks like uh, if you would put everything through wide angle lens. The bent parameter adjusts fisheye amount. The next one is Vignette. Vignette emulates Vignette, obviously. You can adjust amount and pulse speed. The next section is noise. This section emulates different sorts of noises. First parameter here is a vertical resolution uh, for the noise or vertical quantization for the noise. You can inherit from global quantization uh, parameter or use custom one if you want to use less so the noise would look bigger than the real resolution. Quantize noise x parameter uh, allows you to quantize 
noise layer by width. So it's instead of squares, you will have uh, small vertical lines or the vice versa. Okay, the first type of noise is a background noise. Uh, this is simple background noise, film grain like noise. The amount parameter helps you to adjust the transparency. The next one is a tape noise. Uh, tape noise, like you can find in all VHS cassettes. It's basically just some noise lines floating down the screen. It sort of emulates data corruption in a VHS tape. You can adjust amount and speed. And the last noise here is a line noise. It emulates a noise in analog video signal. Uh, so basically how it looks like it's just some lines popping up randomly during a certain amount of time. You can adjust amount and speed. The next section is jitter section. Jitter uh, is a deviation in analog signal. The first thing here is a scan lines. You can draw the black lines in between the quantized screen lines. Better works uh, with the low resolution. By tweaking width parameter you can adjust the width of scan lines. The next thing here is floating lines. Uh, the screen consists of horizontal lines and by turning on floating lines the lines will flow down the screen. This thing also works the best with the low resolution. The next thing is the stretch noise. Stretch noise emulates noise and data corruption on the VHS cassette plus some CRT jitter. It looks like if some of the screen lines were stretched and floating up and down the screen. The next thing is a horizontal jitter. It emulates interlacing. So you can adjust amount of it. And then the next one is a vertical jitter, which almost the same, but have a little bit different behavior. It adds a bit of YQ color shifting. You can adjust amount and speed of it. Uh, the next thing here is twitch horizontal function. It shifts and displaces the image horizontally. You can adjust how frequently it happens. And the last one in this section is twitch vertical function. It shakes or like sort of shift screen horizontally sometimes. The image jumps on or falls vertically. You can adjust the frequency. Okay, the next uh, section is a signal section. In this section you can adjust the YIQ values. As I said before, the YIQ is the color space used in analog video signal. The first part here is a is a permanent adjustment of YIQ. So you can adjust Y, I and Q channels separately. And then next one is a shifting YIQ. You can shift Y, I and Q channels separately. I'm finding this part is most interesting in the whole shader because it allows you to make this like uh, psychedelic or like really strange coloring, which gives sort of like VHS look in the end, but in the same time, it doesn't look that overused. And personally, this is my favorite part. And the last thing here is gamma correction. Gamma correction helps you to balance gamma or the brightness of the signal. Okay, and the last section here is, or almost last section, is a phosphor trail section. Phosphor trail section emulates screen decay. It basically works as a feedback and adds a part of previous frame to the current frame. For easy understanding this effect, you have to go to tools and choose debug trail, then you can see only the trail and then you always can turn it off back and, and mix the trail and the image together. Let me explain how it works. So input cutoff adjusting brightness threshold of input. Basically how much of each frame affects the trail. 
if it equals to some value, it means that all pixels which brightness is lower than this value are not going to affect the trail. And so all other pixels which brightness are more than this value are going to affect the trail. So it's basically working as a threshold, like allowing to certain pixels going to feedback to the trail and the others are not. And you can adjust this threshold. The input amount, it's like sort of brightness of trail. So you can make it brighter or not too bright or whatever. And the fade, it basically adjusts how fast trail fades. You can make longer trails or like really short trails up to you. And the last section is tools section. Here it's just, as I said before, there are debug modes for to debugging bleed curve and trail. And also there is function called unscale time. So basically if you're writing a game and then you wanna pause your game with a usually time scale equal to zero, then all your timers in the game uh, will be equal to zero. They're not, they're gonna stop. And including the timer in the shader. So normally the shader would stop and all the effects in the shader would stop. And if you don't want this behavior, then you have to check this unscaled time, then the shader will use unscaled time to run. And if you will pause your game, the shader will keep running. So this is basically that's that's all about the shader. Um, I will keep improving it in uh, future updates. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always like write in comments or write me an email or whatever. I would love to hear what, what you think about it.